Я могу где уйти? Hi there, so welcome to the broadcast today. Uh, very much excited for having you. This is a business lecture and within show, and today we're going to be uh, discussing a couple of issues in relation to that. Okay, so I see a question from Daniel uh, Oji. Uh, Daniel Oji said, uh, Hi, yeah, hello, Daniel. Then he said, What is functional budget? Yes, that is what I'm going to be talking about. In a moment so we'll be looking at our functional budget so make sure you stay tuned if you have any other questions also put them in the comment box uh, or in the chat box and I'm going to be answering all your questions as well as I'm going to be covering budgeting and budgetary control uh, today this is going to be more or less like the part two of the of the discussion on budgeting and budgetary control so if you have any questions you put it in the chat box or in the comment box and I'm going to be answering all of that for you in relation to that all right daniel oh you said thank you let me see and adjust my board a little bit okay so if you join the broadcast you have any questions you know what to do put them in the comment box i'm going to be answering all of your questions for you or in the chat box i'm going to be answering all of your questions for you uh to help you to be able to uh take your life take your career to the next level yesterday we had a beautiful q a uh session where i answered a lot of uh questions as well for students so um in case you missed that you make sure that you watch that video as well on on the channel to help you to uh understand what what we're doing in relation to that just want to make sure that i get my face in the camera in that case right so when it comes to budgeting uh, uh when it comes to acc f5 or acc f2 or uh sema or, or ic uh ghana introduction to management accounting or 
uh, uh, management accounting proper in level two, and then the ICANN that is the uh, Nigerian the Institute of Chartered Accountants Nigeria. Uh, that also we have management accounting there. Whatever our level of studies that you are uh, pursuing or that you are undertaking, one of the key topics as far as you are studying something related to management accounting or managerial accounting, one of the key things you're going to be looking at is the issue about budgeting and budgetary control because one of the fundamental roles, one of the fundamental responsibility of the management accountant is to prepare budgets. All right is to prepare budget so at the end of the day we've got to find out how the organization will be able to do so we're going to find out how the organization it's going to be able to do that in relation to that so as a management accountant one of the role that uh, we're going to be having is to uh, help the company or assist the organization in issues about budgeting because every entity has to uh, budget and find out what, what are the various forms of budget now in the previous uh, video that is the part one of this one I did it as a live stream on my uh, Facebook page actually I did it as a live stream on my Facebook page but I'm doing the part two here just uh, for 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 me to take it Right, so let's get into it real quick. So I did a part one of this uh, uh, discussion on my Facebook page, but I'm doing uh, or looking at the part two of that uh, today in relation to, to that, to be able to assist you to uh, prepare well for your examination and uh, take your life and your career to the next level in relation to that. So that is what we want to uh, look out for today and discuss today here. So I'm going to be linking below the part one of this discussion where I discuss the issues about uh, types of budgeting. We look at the preparation of the functional, uh, sorry, the flexible budget and I explain how the flexible budget will be prepared so I'm going to be leaving that video in the description of this uh, particular lecture or in the comment box of this particular lecture and you can uh, watch that video as well in relation to that but today I want to touch on the uh, part two well, let's look at how we can prepare functional budget we're going to be solving a couple of questions as well on how we can prepare functional budget but most importantly I will also be answering your questions for you because it's a Q&A session at the same time I'm going to be teaching so if there are any topics that you have problem with it are certain things you have challenge with all you can do is put it in the chat box or put it in the comment box and I'm going to be reading that live and I'm going to be answering that uh, for you as well so whatever questions you have whatever challenge you have whatever subject it is that you want me to throw some light on maybe you are studying some a topic but you are not understanding it too well or very well I can assist you I can help you to be able to understand that better so put it in the chat box and uh let me know about it and also remember to give us a give us a thumbs up for this video and also share it with your colleagues as well in relation to that so when it comes to budgeting there are processes or stages of preparation of budget so i'm going to give you what i refer to as the general process or the general stage involving the preparation of budget now Thank you for the thumbs up. Uh, if if I if I give you this general stage, general procedure, that is what we're going to be going through in order for us to prepare all functional budgets. So like uh, uh, OG Daniel OG asked earlier, he she he asked, uh, what is a functional budget? So functional budgets are simply budgets that are prepared by the various functions or departments within the organization. So it is from the functional budgets that we are able to prepare the master budget, which is the cash budget the budgeted income statement and then the budgeted statement of financial position in relation to that so what i want to do first is to give you the general procedure 
preparation of the budget and we're going to be going through the general procedure for the preparation of the budget then right after that i'm going to be taking you one after the other then we look at how the various functional budgets are prepared how the various pieces are added together and because this is a very important uh topic in your management accounting syllabus whether you like it or not there is a question in the exam hall waiting for you on budgeting and budgetary control and certainly the preparation of functional budget is at the core of uh, the topic of budgeting aside the methods of budgeting which is zero based budgeting activity based budgeting uh, issues in relation to uh, participatory budgeting non participatory budgeting uh, issues in relation to so all of these types of budgeting this is one of the key areas theoretical areas for every management accounting uh, area but the next key area in budgeting is the preparation of the functional budget and that is what i want us to spend some time on today discuss today in relation to that so like i mentioned if you have any question come on put it in the chat box for me i'm gonna read it i'm gonna reply and assist you to be able to prepare well for your examination so let me put my uh chat down my little chat uh, let me put it down in relation to that so procedures or procedure the general procedure let me call it that way for preparation of budget okay so gen the general procedure for the preparation of budgets so when an entity i believe my blue marker is okay i believe you can see my blue marker very well unfortunately I'm, i've run out of my black market so i have blue and i think green marker here can you imagine that so we're going to be staying with a blue marker i believe you can see uh about the let me know if you can see with a thumbs up on the video so general procedure for the preparation of the budget it starts with the budget committee right it's going to start always with the budget committee so the budget committee meets all right then step two we determine the principal budget factor all right step three we prepare the sales budget okay step four we prepare all the functional budgets step five you can prepare now the master budget and i'm going to put all the cash budget the income statement and all of that into the master budget okay to prepare the master budget in relation to that i think i see uh, a question in the chat box let me refer to that real quick so that i stay up to date with you okay so mustafa iban what is the formula for mpv testing of inventory can you give example of estimated cost to complete that okay i'm coming uh razak i see your question i'm coming uh maybe we can deal with that razak said he's finding it difficult to see from the board could it be because of my marker is it possible you shouldn't find it difficult to see i'm coming let's see if we can solve the issue okay so stay with me okay so mustafa said what is the formula for npv testing of inventory then can you give example of estimated cost to complete that to complete that is involved in computing npv um uh, mustafa i don't get your question very well can you clarify it when you say a formula for testing uh inventory mpv formula for mpv testing of inventory i don't get it well maybe you can reframe the question and i can understand uh, uh i don't know if you're talking about treatment of inventory cost or so maybe you can clarify that in relation to that lupo steven said hello good to be here my phone went off yesterday all the discussion yesterday was superb my spirit was elevated many times it's a pleasure steven welcome to the broadcast today if you have any questions please put it in the comments box put it in the chat box i'm going to be answering all of that for you then razak is saying i don't know if it is from my end 
but I am finding it difficult to see from the board. Is anybody finding it difficult to see from the board? Like, can't you see what I've written? Razak is saying that he cannot see. If you can see, give, give me a thumbs up on the video. If you can see, let me know from the chat box so that if I have to change my marker, then I do that quickly. If you can see the blue marker, you give me a thumbs up on the video or put it in the chat box real quick. Let me know if you can see very well. Because Razak said he cannot see uh, too well on the board. He's finding it difficult to see on the board. So Razak, is it okay? Are you still seeing? Is it Blair or something like that? Maybe I got to change my marker. I think the black would be better than the blue. Because the blue doesn't really light up unfortunately my black markers are finished and since on lockdown i could hardly go out to get some extra market so i'm gonna manage the black okay i'm gonna manage the black i think that's gonna be much better than the blue so let's go through it in relation to that okay so i see a comment razak said i'm okay now all right razak so let's get going in relation to that. So we're looking at the preparation of the functional budget. If you have any questions, boom, you know what to do. Put it in the chat box. I'm going to be answering all your questions for you. So what I want to discuss with you here is very, very critical. It's very, very critical. Um, I see another question uh, here. So let me see what we got there. Okay, Mustafa said, can you please clarify formula for computing net realizable value of inventory? Uh, okay, okay. Oh, I was seeing MPV, Mustafa, sorry. So net realizable value, net realizable value, net realizable value is simply the selling price minus cost to sell. Okay, the selling price minus the cost to sell. All right, so uh, that is the formula for net realizable value. What does that mean? So if you are valuing inventory, you know, according to IAS 2, inventory must be va valued at lower of cost or net realizable value. Now, it means that if we have an inventory and the inventory cost, uh, say, $20,000, that is the cost of the inventory, but we can sell that inventory for, say, $22,000, and when we are selling it, to be able to finish with the sales, we must incur a cost of, say, $3,000. That means that the net realizable value is the difference between the selling price and then the cost to sell, and that is going to be $19,000. So if we now compare the $19,000, which is the net realizable value, to the cost of the inventory, which is the $20,000, the lower becomes the value of the inventory. So Razak... Uh, sorry, Mustafa, that is the answer to your question about the NPV. So the, sorry, the NRV, that is the net realizable value. That is the selling price minus the cost to sell in relation to that. Does it make sense? Let me know if you understand it. If you don't too, uh, let me know if there is any other clarification I need to do for you. So Olupo Steven is asking, when are we looking at for our content on business valuation, currency risk management, interest rate risk management. Now, Stephen, I, I have some videos already on the channel on currency risk management. So if you go to the channel page, okay, if you go to the channel page, uh, Daniel Oji, I've seen your question. Hold on, let me, I'll be answering that in a moment. So Stephen, if you go to my channel page, I think there is a playlist there. Let me see if I can find it. There is a playlist there about financial management. Yes, understanding financial management. So there is a playlist on my channel called Understanding uh, Financial Management. In that playlist, as at today, as at today that I'm shooting this video, we have about 44 videos on financial management. Now, in that playlist, we have treated all the issues about business valuation. Okay, so all the videos on business valuation, you can get them there. All the videos on investment appraisal, you can get them there. And then most importantly, what you are just asking of the foreign currency uh, risk management. Uh, you can get all of that there. I think I have about four parts video on that. And each. 
So Olupo Steven, I already have this videos on my channel. So I think you just have to go back to the channel. Maybe after watching this, uh, in relation to that, the playlist is called Understanding Financial Management. I have 44 videos on that, and it's everything about financial management. And in that playlist, you can get a video on the topics that you were asking me of. Okay, you can get the videos on the topics that you were asking me of. I thought we were not having. Uh, videos already there but it was yesterday that uh, my team notified me that there were videos already on the channel so you are asking of um, a business valuation there is something there already you are asking of um, um, currency risk management there is a video there already you are asking of interest rate risk management we have all of that on in that playlist so you can check it out after the uh, after this discussion and watch all of the videos there to help you to understand uh, those concepts very well in relation to that so let's continue with the discussion in relation to that so uh, Daniel Oji said can you please repeat the explanation sorry draw you back uh og explanation on what is it on the functional budget because i'll be coming I, i'm going to be coming to that in a moment though so let's go so this is the general procedure so let me clean this up um this was a question i answered from uh mustafa sorry from mustafa in relation to that so let's go through Okay, Daniel Oji is saying that uh, the net realizable value. Oh, okay. So that is what he said. I should explain again. Okay. So I said the net realizable value is the selling price minus uh, the cost to sell. So according to IAS2, inventory should be carried at lower of cost or net realizable value. So at the end of the day, if we are placing a value on the closing inventory, we must find out what is the cost of the inventory and then what is the net realizable value of the inventory. So for instance, if the cost of the inventory is $20,000, all right, but we realize that we can sell that inventory. So selling price of the inventory is say $22,000. But in order for us to conclude the sale, we need to uh, incur some cost to sell, like pay of, paying of commission and those things. So the cost to sell, it's let's say $3,000. In that case, it means when we now sell this inventory at $22,000, we are not going to be getting $22,000 because of the commission of $3,000 that we're going to be paying, which is the cost to sell the inventory. For that reason, the net realizable value, the money that will actually flow to the entity as a result of the sale, it's going to be the $3,000 from the $22,000, and that is going to be $19,000. So when we now compare the net realizable value of $19,000 with the cost of the inventory, which is the $20,000, the lowest, which is the net realizable value of $19,000, that is what we use as the value of the inventory. So that is the concept, if you are asking, of net realizable value. So, Daniel Oji, I believe you get the point now in relation to that. Let me save some water. Okay, so Daniel Oji said thank you. You're welcome. Right, so let's go. So this is the general procedure. Like I said, if you join the stream and you have any questions on whatever, okay, it may not necessarily have to be on budgeting. It may not necessarily have to be on management accounting. Any question you have, you can just put it in the chat box, put it in the comment box. I'm going to be reading it and I'll reply to it as I teach this critical topic as well for all management accounting students in relation to that. All right. So make sure you stay with me. So the general procedure for the preparation of budgets. So remember in the part one of the video, like I said, the, the, the video, the link will be available in the comment box and in the description box of the part one of the budgeting that I covered in relation to that. But uh, we did the types of the various things about budgeting, the preparation of the flex budget in relation to that, and then the preparation of the variance statements. Now, what we want to look out for here is to look at the general procedure for the preparation of the budget. Now, when I, when I use the word general procedure, it does not mean uh, this is the typical way that budgets are 
are prepared. I, I just uh, use this general procedure in order to help us to arrive at the explanation that we need, keenly for our exam. So the first thing is the budget committee meets. The budget committee meets. Now, when we say the budget committee, what is the budget committee? What is it made up of? What are they required to do? What is their responsibility? So the first thing in every budgeting, whether for a public sector or a private sector, whether for a multinational company or a mom, mom and pop company, when they are preparing budget, the first thing is that the budget committee meets. Now, the budget committee is simply a committee which draws individuals from the various uh, departments of the organization in order to decide how the budget will be prepared for the period under consideration. So on the budget committee, we have the HR manager or somebody from the HR there. We have somebody from the finance department there. We have somebody from the store department there. We have somebody from the marketing department there. We have somebody from the uh, purchasing and uh, uh, supply department there. We have somebody from the IT uh, department there. So all the various departments within the organization, there is going to be a representative. Usually, it is going to be the head of the organization or the deputy or the assistant of that particular uh, department that will be part of the budget committee so the first stage is that that budget committee is going to meet and so that is what the budget committee is made up of various individuals from various uh, department of the organization who meets to decide how the budget for the period under consideration should be prepared but the big question we ask ourselves is okay how do we prepare the budget I mean, how do we get a budget prepared in relation to that? So check this out. Okay. So how do we get a budget prepared in relation to that? So what does the budget committee do? The budget committee, among other things, have three uh, uh or has it has a three key responsibility the first thing the budget committee does is to determine the strategic objective of the organization the strategic goal or objective of the organization in the budgeted period under consideration where are we going what do we want to achieve what do we want to undertake as a company all right, maybe it's our objective to increase our market share. Maybe it's our objective to increase the profitability. Maybe it's our objective to uh, maybe uh, launch a new product. What is the objective of the organization? So when the budget committee meets, they set and define the strategic objective of the organization. Now, remember, the budget committee will also be made up of the sometimes the CEO as well as the board chairman or some people from the board to be part of the budget committee in relation to that. So more or less like the board is actually meeting in relation to that for them to meet. So they design the strategic objective of the organization. Where do we see ourselves going? What are we going to be doing in the next period? So what does the budget committee do? The first thing the budget committee does is to determine the strategic objective of the organization. So I see your question, Mustafa. I'm going to be replying to that in a moment. So make sure you stay with me. After the budget committee determined the strategic objective, what the company wants to achieve within the budget period under consideration, the second thing that the budget committee does is to identify or determine the basic assumptions that will be used in the preparation of the budget. You see, budgets are estimates. Okay, budgets are estimates or plans expressed in monetary terms representing the estimates of the future revenue and expenditure that an entity is going to be incurring or receiving. Now, since it is an estimate we are making, we don't have to allow each department to use their own estimates. There has to be a generally accepted estimate by the whole entity that each department abides abide by. For that reason, the budget committee determines and tabled out the basic assumption for the budgeted period under consideration. Now, when we talk about basic assumption here, we are talking about issues such as the rate of inflation that we have to use, the exchange rates that we have to use if we buy things, we buy uh, from uh, outside or we sell goods to outside, there is going to be forest exchange rates. So what exchange rates do we use? What uh, 
interest rate will we, will we use? What uh, discount rate will we use if we have to determine the present value of certain types of cash flows? All of these things are what comes under the basic assumptions. Okay, what minimum wage legislation should we use? These are all the things that comes under the minimum, uh, the basic assumption. So after they decide where do we want to go, what do we want to achieve, what do we want to do within the budget period under consideration, the second thing they do is to determine the basic assumptions. What interest rate, what exchange rate, what uh, uh, um, inflation rate, what uh, uh, discount rate will we be using in the preparation of the budget under consideration. That is the second thing. Then the third thing that the budget committee does is to talk about the documentation of the budgets. Documentation of the budget. Documentation. So for all the functional budgets that we'll be preparing in a moment, we'll be going through them, that's in stage three and stage four. For all the functional budget that we'll be preparing, how should they be documented? What should be the pro forma? What should be the content? What should be the structure? All of that comes under what? Documentation. Because there has to be some high level of uniformity so that we can bring all the budgets together in the preparation of our master budget, right? So to enhance that uniformity in the budget from various departments within the organization or from various segments within the organization, the budget committee, among other things, determines the structure, the, document the documentation, the pro forma and the content of the budget in relation to that. So that is the first stage of the budget preparation. Budget committee meets, they determine the strategic objective of the organization, they determine the basic assumptions that will be used in the preparation of the budget, and then they look at the documentation in relation to that. So let me look at the question from Mustafa. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so Mustafa said, what would be the net realizable value and cost of the item in this case? In which case, Mustafa, okay, I'll see, in your example, inventory costs 20000 but it's old and slightly damaged, and we will need to incur 2000 further expenses to make it sellable. Selling price of the item is uh, 19000 Right, so in this case, the 19,000 will become the uh, value of the inventory, okay? Because yes, it is 20,000, but we will incur a cost of 2,000 to make it sellable, and we can only sell it for 19,000. So the selling uh, price becomes the value of the inventory in relation to that. So Mustafa, that is the answer to the question. Samuel Kwesin said, uh, hi there, good to see you today. I think this is also critical for management for strategic case study yes some of that is very true budgeting it's uh critical for strategic case study because you know in strategic case study we are actually merging all of the things together so yes budgeting is also something keen there in relation to that um oj said nra is um seventeen thousand. I don't get it. Okay, let me see what you are saying. So maybe this, I'm just seeing what you are trying to say. So the inventory costs 20,000, uh, but it is old and slightly damaged, and we need to be, we need to incur a further 2,000 call to make it sellable. Selling price of the item is uh, 19,000. Okay, okay, so the cost of the, uh, because the inventory is old, the cost of uh, the restoration or the dam the repairing of the damage will be two thousand. Okay, okay, that's fine. So that is our first stage, budget committee uh, meeting. Then we come to the second stage. Now this is one of the critical areas in the stages of budgeting. Very critical areas area. The first, second thing is determination of what is called the principal budget factor the determination of what is called the principal budget factor now what is a principal budget factor in a simple language we say that a principal budget factor is the central idea or the central uh, or the pivot around which the budget is going to be prepared 
For instance, uh, when it comes to determination on a principal uh, budget, there are two sources we have to look out for. We have for profit making organization and then not for profit making organization. For profit making organizations, that is companies, the, the principal budget factor can be material availability. Can also be labor hours available. It can also be uh, machine capacity or demand conditions. Okay, so all of these can be principal budget factor. Now, let me explain this quickly. If an entity that, that is the budget committee decides that, oh, this year we want to increase profitability. So for that reason, we want to sell um, 100,000 units of the output of the product because we want to increase profitability. All right, that is good. Now, for us to be able to produce this 100,000 units, we need, let's say, 200,000 liters of the raw materials that we uh, we need for that particular product 200,000 liters of the raw material now if the raw material we can get during the year from all our sources is just 150,000 liters the question is can we prepare budget on the 100,000 no it means that we can only prepare the budget based on how many materials we are we can buy or we can get during the year. So even though our objective is to sell 100,000 units, because the material limits us, we are going to be preparing the budget using what? 150,000 material. That is what we refer to as the principal budget factor. The central idea, the central pivot around which the budget is going to be prepared. The factor that will prevent the entity from achieving the objective. It is more or less like the limiting factor within the organization. The same concept applies to the labor hours. If we require 10,000 labor hours, but during the year, when we do everything, we can only get 8,000 labor hours, then we have to prepare our budget using the 8,000 labor hours because it means that is what we are limited with. That can also be a limiting factor. Or machine capacity. Let's say, for instance, our machine capacity is the issue in relation to um, uh, 70,000 units. So we want to produce 100,000 units, but our machine capacity is 70,000 units. And the company is not ready to incur more cost to acquire new machines in relation to that. What does that mean then? It means in order for us to prepare the budget, we have to prepare the budget based on the capacity of the machine. So the machine capacity can also be a limiting factor or a principal budget factor. Then the fourth thing is about demand conditions. How many, how many units can we sell? How many units will we buy, will be, are people ready to buy? So based on our market research, people can buy only uh, 80,000 units of the product during the year. But we, the management or the budget committee and the board will say that, oh, let's sell 150,000. Who will you sell it to? Maybe there is not going to be any new market and there is no way we are, not, we are going to be uh, getting that in relation to that. So how do we sell it out? It means that the demand conditions becomes a limiting factor in relation to that. So that is the key concept that you need to understand when it comes to for profit making organization. The principal budget factor can be machine uh, capacity, can be the labor hours availability or the material availability or the demand condition. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Then the fourth one is or oh, the second slide there is about not-for-profit making organization. When it comes to not-for-profit making organizations and NGOs and all of that, they also determine their objective, they determine the uh, basic assumptions, they look at the documentation, but they, their principal budget factor is not about machine, material, demand conditions, those kind of things, but their principal budget factor is about funding, that is all. NGOs and not-for-profit making organizations prepare their budget primarily based on how much money they can get during the year. So if they speculate that they can get $500,000 during the year, then their budget is going to be based on how much fund they can raise or how much funding that will be available during the year under consideration. That is what you have to understand when it comes to the principal budget factor.
But this is the key thing you have to take away here. This is the key thing you have to take away. And this is very critical for ACC F2, ACC F5, and uh, other forms of management accounting uh, courses. When it comes to for profit making organizations, for profit making organizations, yes, even though material availability can be a principal budget factor, even though labor hours available can be a principal budget factor, even though the machine capacity can be a principal budget factor, all of those things are kicked aside. And we say that the principal budget factor for, prof for profit making organizations is the demand condition. How many units of the product can we sell and how many units of the product uh, will people or buy from us that becomes the basic assumption for us in the identification of the principal budget factor so yes all of those other things can be principal budget factor but for the preparation of our budget and for our academic and cost purposes we assume that the principal budget factor for organizations is the demand conditions that is for profit making organization and not for profit making organization that one the principal budget factor is funding how much money we can raise in relation to that so that is the second stage identification or determination of the principal budget factor right so that is it about that so after the budget committee meets they determine these three things they identify the principal budget factor this is where the real journey begins so make sure you stay with me very very well here so this is where the real journey begins step one we prepare the sales budget now remember what we said a moment ago that for profit making organizations it is assumed that the principal budget factor it is assumed it is assumed that the principal budget factor is the uh, sales demand of the organization is the sales demand of the organization for that reason the first budget that is prepared so one to the third stage is to prepare the sales budget so what is the sales budget about the sales budget is simply a budget showing the output to be sold and the revenue to be generated from those sales the output to be sold and the revenue to be generated from those sales so the sales budget shows two things how many units of output are we going to be selling and what is the value for those outputs in relation to that so i see some comments there let me look at them real quick uh daniel Oji said i want to add this principal budget factors can there be a limiting factor this mm -mm. Can there be a limiting factor to these facts? Uh, OJ, I don't get your point well. Maybe you can clarify for me in relation to that. I don't get your comment well. I want to add to this principal budget factors. Can there be a limiting factor these factors? Uh, I don't get, like I said, I don't get your uh, statement well. Maybe you can clarify it more for me than I can get it. Or can there be a limiting factor to these factors? I don't know if you want to say, can there be a limiting factor to these factors? Yes, there can be a limiting factor. That is why I said the principal budget factor itself is the is a limiting factor. It's like a bottleneck. What is the, the bottleneck process? What is the bottleneck uh, thing for the organization? Then I see another comment from Mustafa. Let me look at that as well. Okay, so let's see. Mustafa is saying that um, for NGOs, I want to add principal budget factor should also be on the social impact other than uh, funding. Oh, okay, Mustafa, you are saying that I want to add principal budget factor should also be on the social impact other than funding. Yes, NGOs will be thinking about the social impact, but uh everything they are doing is for social impact already okay so they will determine the social impact they want to create at this level that is a strategic objective but when it comes to 
the budget preparation itself yeah prince i know you are welcome to the broadcast hi uh when it comes to the preparation of the budget itself they are going to be looking at the funding how much money is available not only the uh, uh social impact because yes if we can do something and we can provide water to a community it is a good thing it's a good social impact but what if we don't have money to uh get give them the water so yes the social impact is good that will be determined here at a strategic level but in the key preparation of their budgets they don't look at the social impact they look at how much money they can raise in relation to that right because how much money will be available is what will be uh budgeting for during the year so they can decide let's do this let's do that let's do this let's do that let's do this let's do that with the money we have available as an entity so mustafa that is the uh thing uh, on that one so after we prepare the sales budget, remember the sales budget usually is prepared by the selling and distribution department with, uh, in conjunction with the board of the organization. So it shows the units of output we're going to be selling for each of the products we are selling. That is, we have a, if we have different product lines in relation to that, uh, maybe we are selling uh, sanitary parts, we are selling uh, toothpaste, we are selling, uh, what else can we sell? We got whatever we are selling. So for each of the units, how many units? Of, we, of each of the products, how many units are we going to be selling and what will be the value for those sales. So that is the sales budget. So once the sales budget is prepared, now we come to the preparation of all other functional budgets. Okay? We come to the preparation of all other functional budgets. Now remember, it does not mean the sales budget is not a functional budget. The sales budget is also a functional budget because remember I told you the functional budget is uh, the budget prepared which represents the various departments or segments within the organization. So the sales budget in itself is a functional budget. However, we always prepare that budget first. Okay, once we prepare that, we now will be able to prepare the other functional budget. Okay, so let's get into the other functional budget and let's see. So after the sales department, we're going to prepare the production budget. We will prepare the material usage budget. We will prepare the material purchases budget. We will prepare the labor hours budget. Then we will prepare the uh, labor cost budget in relation to that. So let's get into all of these as we go ahead in relation to that. So I'm going to soup up my board and let's start. So we are on the fourth step, the preparation of all functional budgets. So the first functional budget or other functional budget we prepare, like I mentioned, is the production budget. So once we know the unit of output we have to sell for each of the products under consideration, we go to the production manager and the production manager has to decide how many units of output that must be, uh, must be produced in order to meet the sales demand. How many units of output must be produced in order to meet the sales demand? That is what the production budget seeks to achieve. How many units of output must be produced in order to meet the sales demand? That is what the production budget seeks to achieve. So what do we do? We always start with the sales units. So from the sales budget, we'll determine, we'll look at the sales units that we are producing. That's where we start from all the time. Then chances are uh, we have some of the goods already in stock, okay? So we're going to be lessing any stocks that are already available. So opening stock of finished goods, we're going to be lessing it out in relation to that. Once we less it out, then we're going to be adding closing stock. Every entity would want to have a certain desired level of closing stock at the end of the year that it wants to keep. So we need to find out, we need to ask ourselves, okay, what, how many closing stocks do we want to have? What is the unit of closing stock do we want to have? And that is going to be added up. Then we get our production units, okay? We get our production units. But this is what you've got to understand. For each of the units produced, 
the chances are they will be defective because there is no perfect machine system for each of the units we produce there is going to be defective so sometimes in the preparation of the production budget in order for us to remember what i told you about the production budget it is the unit of outputs to produce in order to meet the sales demand so in order for us to determine the units of outputs we have to produce in order to meet the sales demand we have to build into the system defective outputs we must build into the system defective output. So yes, this is the unit we have to produce. But the question is, if we produce this unit, will it be able to meet the sales demand? The answer may be no. Why? Because we have to build into the system defective output. So we're going to be adding defective output to it. And now that is going to give us the units to produce to meet the sales okay you need to produce to meet sales I hope it makes sense now let me illustrate this to you very well how do you build into the system the defective output so this is how the language can be the language can be that so the the question can be that five units or five percent of units produced are defective it can state that. So if 5% of all units produced are defective, what does that mean? Remember, this is the unit produced, the thing. We don't have that yet. So how do we go about that in relation to that? So this is what we do. So if an example is that 5% uh, of units produced are defective, that means that the production unit we had here represents 95%. So for us to be able to get the defective output, that is going to be 5 over 95 times this production unit here. And that is how we get the defective output. I hope you get the principle very well. I said uh, in the question, the examiner could say all units, 5% of all units produced are defective. So if we are preparing the production budget, we have to build into the system the defective units because we, in the production budget, we want to determine how many units of output we must produce in order for us to meet the sales demand for that period under consideration. So what do we do then? We build that into the system. So if it says 5%, what we say is that the production unit figure we will get here represents 95%. So we take 5% of 95% times that particular figure, and that is the defective output. When we now add that effective output to the production unit, the figure we get or the answer we get is what this refers to as the units to produce to meet the sales demand. So this is how we prepare the production budget. This is very, very critical. This is very, very critical. Now, one of the things that you got to also understand is this, that for instance, sometimes uh, you got to compute the closing stock and the opening stock. It's not going to be on a silver platter for you uh, to just pick it up from the question straight up. The examiner could say that the value of closing stock is maybe 20% of next month's sales. The value of closing stock is 20% of next month's sales. Now, one of the things I tell my students all the time when it comes to budgeting and budgetary control is the issue about English. Is the issue about English. When it comes to budgeting and budgetary control, you're going to be struggling with it if you don't read the English very well. Because we are dealing with English there. So, for instance, the examiner says 5% of all outputs produced are defective. So, quickly, you know this is the structure I need to put down. Or you read a question and the examiner said the closing stock for each month is 5% of next month's sales. Or closing stock of each month is 20% of next month's sales. So, it means that uh, definitely we're going to be having the sales output. So, if I have Jane, I have Faith. I have March, 3,000 here, 4,000 here, and I'm looking for the closing stock, and the examiner said 20%. It means the closing stock of January has to be 20% of what? February sales. And that is going to be uh, 600. And the closing stock for February has to be the 20% of March, and that is going to be also 800 in relation to that. I hope you are getting the concept. So you need to be able to read between the lines in order for you to uh, conclude in relation to what must be brought and also the issue about the defective output. So this is how we prepare the production budget.
any questions if you have any questions please put them in the chat box then you can put this down quickly and let's continue We're good. So let's continue. So after we get a production uh, budget in relation to that, to get the units to produce to meet sales. So remember, there's a difference between the production units and the units to produce to meet sales. Okay, that is the final answer that we are after. That is if there is defective output uh, built into the system in relation to that. My device is going low battery. Let me plug. Okay, so let's go. I think I see a question from Prince Anno. Let me look at that real quick. Prince is saying, Sir, please, what if you can, what if you add the increased inventory to sales units? Uh, Prince, I don't understand what you are saying. Which increased inventory are you talking about here? Prince, you are asking, what if you add the increased inventory to the sales units? What increase inventory are you talking about here? Maybe you can clarify it for me, okay? So that I can answer you uh, better in relation to that. So now that we prepare the production budgets to get the units to produce to meet the sales demand, the next thing we do is to prepare the material budget. The material budget. So that is the second functional budget that is prepared the material budget now the material budget is divided usually into uh, three or four folds sorry th two or three folds we're going to prepare the material usage budget that is how many kilograms or how many liters of materials we need in order to produce the units in order to meet the sales uh, demand then we're going to be preparing also for the material purchases budget which is going to be material to be purchased in kilograms or in liters and then the value of the materials that we're going to be purchasing so it's divided into three uh, core areas and let's go into it in relation to that so when it comes to the material budget we first going to be looking at the material usage or the material required budget So for the unit of output that we want to produce, for the unit of output that we want to produce, how many kilograms of materials do we need? How many kilograms of materials do we need? So if we are preparing the material usage budget for the units to produce in order to meet the sales demand, what do we do? The first thing is to bring our, our production units. 
that is the units to produce in order to meet the sales demand from the production budget very very important then you bring the usage the material usage per unit i'm going to be saying that uh, that will be in say kilograms okay i'm assuming it will be in kilograms so once we bring that we multiply it and that will be the material usage in kilograms definitely in kilograms but when it comes to materials now listen to the, me carefully here when it comes to materials one thing that you have to understand is this when we use materials the materials we input is not the total output we are going to be getting. Why? Because there is going to be wastages. There is going to be normal losses. All right. For instance, if I'm sewing this dress, the tailor will say that, oh, I need maybe two years or whatever it is. If, if it is two years, yes, I buy the two years, but the, the, he's not going to be using all the two years on the dress. Why? Because of the cutting, because of everything that they have to do. So there are going to be some of part of the material is going to be going to waste. So technically, he's going to be using something like one and a half or something like that to sew the dress and the other pieces will become waste. The same thing applies when it comes to producing of products, manufacturing organizations, but there is going to be normal losses, there are going to be wastages. So if we are determined the materials we need in order to produce the outputs that will enable us to meet the sales demand, we have to build into the system normal loss. We have to build into the system wastages that are traditionally allowable, that are traditionally uh, constant in relation to that. So what do we do? We add normal loss. So if we add a normal loss, we will now be able to get the material required to meet production units. Okay? Material required to meet production units. Now, some of these things that I'm uh, uh, putting some names on, you can find a book and uh, some of the languages may be different, especially the final ones. Sometimes it is still called the material usage budget. It is still called the material required budget. No big deal in relation to that. So what is the normal loss about? The normal loss concept is the same as what we did in the uh, uh, production unit. Okay, it applies the same concept. So if it says 7% of all material inputs are wastage or goes to waste. 7% of all material inputs goes to waste. Now, 7% of all material input is this one, but we don't have that one. So what do we do? If, if it is 7%, that means that the material usage I had here represents 93%. So if I want the normal loss, I'm going to do 7% of 93 times the figure that I had here, and that is how I build the normal loss into the system in relation to that. I hope you are getting the principle. So that is how we determine or calculate the first aspect of the material budget, and that is the material usage budget. The material usage budget. That's the first thing. That's the first thing all the time. Now, after we have the material usage budget, so if you have any questions put it in the comment box or uh, the chat box and and put this down real quick giving you some a minute or so prince i know if you are listening or you are watching i said you can you should clarify your question for me because i did not get a clarification right I did not get a clarification on that well. Okay. So, 30 seconds to go. Real quick. Okay, Mustafa is asking that um, what about abnormal wastages? how to incorporate it in the budget normally when we are preparing the budget we cannot assume for abnormal wastages okay we cannot assume, uh, assume for abnormal wastages the only thing we can assume for is the normal loss 
it is when we start the production that abnormal loss may set in in relation to that and normally abnormal loss comes because of something maybe machine breakdown or uh uh uh, uh something happened so we don't uh, really we at the time that we are preparing the budget we it will be hard for us to incorporate abnormal wastages the only thing we can incorporate is the normal wastage which is the usual production conditions that we know of of our company and that will guide us in the preparation of the budget so but whatever type of wastage that we have to build into it the concept goes the same way but the thing is Usually, it's only normal loss we take care of because the abnormal loss would come in after we compare the actual output with the expected output. So it is when you start production that you'll be able to analyze and determine any abnormal loss or abnormal wastages. And that is typically under process costing. Probably, I'll be touching on that as we continue. Can be a J or being of so nice, but your text is ineligible. Okay, so can be saying that you can't read uh, what I'm writing well. I don't know. I think uh, who mentioned that a, a earlier as well? Razak mentioned that earlier, but he said he was okay. Uh, Kim, if you said the text is ineligible, can't you see well? I was actually using a blue marker. Okay, Mustafa said I can read. Okay, so can be maybe just uh, check your device a little bit. I know that my writings are not too clear as usual uh, because I'm actually out of my black marker and I have a blue marker. I have blue markers here, but that is also not too clear. It sounds a bit, it's a, it looks a bit blur. So, uh, and we are on lockdown, right? So, uh, hardly can I go out to get some of these, but hopefully I may try to see if I can get some of the black markers tomorrow for delivery to be done for us in relation to that. But what I have here is the production unit, um, the material usage per unit, which is in kilograms. Uh, the mat and when we multiply that, we get the material usage. We build into the system normal loss and we'll get the material required to meet the production uh, unit in relation to that, all right? So that is it about that. So let's look at the next one. And that is gonna be the material purchases budget. So once we prepare the material usage budgets, now we know how many kilograms of materials we need in order to produce the production units that will enable us to meet the sales demand. So once we know the materials we need, we have to go to the storekeeper and ask the storekeeper, this is the material we need to produce the units we have to produce in order to meet the sales. How many materials must we buy to the store? How many materials must we buy to the store? Uh, I see another question from Kim B. Let me look at that. He says, uh, why do we call them functional budgets? Okay, so Kim B, we call them functional budgets because these budgets represent various functions or departments within the organization. Okay, so they are functional budgets because they are prepared by various departments within the organization. So the selling and distribution function or department prepares the sales budget, the production department prepares the production budget, and then the material usage budget, then the store department, purchasing and supply department prepares the material purchases budget, the production department again prepares the labor hours required budget, and then the HR department will, and then the finance department will prepare the labor cost budget in relation to that, right? So this is uh, why we call it a functional or we call them a functional budget because various departments or functions of the organizations are the ones who prepare it in relation to that. Okay, it's super easy. All right, that's awesome. So Prince said, sir, please, so... For the material purchase budget, can you subtract decreased inventory from material usage so that you will add the standard cost of raw material? Easy, easy, easy. Let me get what you are saying uh, very well. 
please the decrease inventory is subtracting the opening stock from closing stock okay so he said sir please for the material purchases budget i've not come to material purchases budget here budget yet i'm coming there so maybe when i come there i can clarify your question for you in relation to that okay prince i know uh this is material usage budget but let me see your question you said uh decrease inventory from the you say can we subtract degrees so that you add a standard cost of raw material no you don't subtract it if anything you have to add it back actually if anything you have to add it back actually in relation to that so because a decrease in inventory means we need to buy uh, more in relation to that so let's go there the material purchases budget so under the material budget three things the material usage budget the material purchases budget that is and then the material cost budget so let's look at it so the second one is the material purchases budget so in the material purchases budget we will look at the material usage budget and bring it on so you realize that for every budget we are preparing we are bringing the results from the previous budget it means if you make a mistake somewhere the mistake will run through all your functional budgets and that is how deadly it can be because one mistake can be carried throughout the functional budget down to the uh, master budget that is why you got to be careful about that so in the material purchases budget what do we bring we bring the material usage, which is in kilograms. That is the material uh, usage we need or the material that is needed in order to meet the production output. Then if we have already some of the inventories in stock, we're going to be less in opening inventory of raw material, opening stock of raw material, because we already have it in stock then the inventory that we want to uh have at the end of the period closing inventory or the closing stock of raw material we're going to be adding it up then we will now get the materials that we need to buy in order to meet the sales uh the production unit so this will be the material purchase in kilograms you know i'm using kilograms as the unit of measurement here and so that is going to be in kilogram so uh the question that you are asking prince Anno, let me now refer to your question he said please the decrease inventory is subtracting the opening stock from the closing stock so subtracting the opening stock from the closing stock so uh, but what if one is bigger than the other will it, you will you still call it a decrease inventory then that one you will call it an increase in inventory uh, then because if you are saying that we subtract um the opening stock from the closing stock chances are the opening stock may be bigger than the closing stock it means you may get a negative answer so if you get a negative answer like how do you do the treatment there in relation to that so we have to look at the context of the question in the context of the scenario very well before we can uh, utilize the idea in relation to that nonetheless we know that opening stock has to be added, uh, subtracted, closing stock has to be added in relation to that. So if there is a decrease in the inventory, that means we must add it back to this. If there is a decrease, if there is an increase in an inventory, we have to uh, um, take it there also in relation to that. So that is the material purchases budget and that is in kilograms. Okay, so Prince Arno is making a clarification. On, on something let me look at it please sorry opening from the closing okay so now you are classifying so opening from the closing like what i'm saying is that still it's going to be the same so let me crunch some numbers for you so let's say that the opening is 2000 and the closing is uh maybe 3000 okay so what you are saying here is that the difference is going to be thousand and what it means is that there will be an increase in inventory of thousand okay this increase in inventory will be added to the material usage budget okay that that is an increase in inventory because you realize that 
if you compare the opening to the closing, the closing is increasing by 1,000. So the increase in the closing inventory will have to be added to this guy in relation to that. But if the opening stock was, say, 5,000, and the closing stock was, say, just 3,000, they realize that there is a decrease in the inventory of 2,000. That decrease in the inventory would have to be subtracted from the material uh, required in order for us to get the uh, materials that we need to purchase in relation to that. So, Prince Arno, I believe you get the meaning of the concept. So, what you are saying is valid, but I want you to see it from the two angles in relation to that. So, now we have the material purchase budget in kilograms. We bring the material cost per kilogram. So the material cost per kilogram. And remember that will be in a currency or in dollars. Once we multiply that up, we are going to get a material purchases budget. And that will be in dollars. So material purchases and that's going to be in dollars in relation to that. So this is how... Wait, my phone is not charging. Give me a moment. Right, so let me look at a question I have here. 
still from Prince Anno. It says, because, please, because that is how the open tuition lecture teaches it. Like it's how, like bringing, I don't get your statement as well in relation to that. It's not about how it is taught. It's about understanding the concept. Okay, so it's a, it's not about how it is taught. It's about understanding uh, the concept in relation to that. So whether you are looking at a decrease in inventory or I don't want you to look at it from the perspective of a decrease in inventory one-sided thing because like the scenario I gave you here if your opening inventory is 2000 and your closing inventory is 3000 it means inventory is increasing by 1000 if in inventory is increasing by 1000 then we have to buy this in addition to the material we require if you look at this, opening inventory is 5,000 and opening inventory, uh, closing inventory is 3,000. Then you realize that our inventory is decreasing by 2,000. If inventory is decreasing by 3,000, then we don't have to buy as much as inventory we need to buy in relation to that. It means we already have some of the inventory there. So in that case, we will subtract it from the material that we need to buy in relation to that. So it is not about how they teach it or how it is taught by open tuition, but it's about understanding what is happening. Because many a time you chew pro forma and don't know the content of the pro forma. So it's not about just bringing decrease in inventory and that is all, no. It's about understanding what each of the pro forma or each of the contents there represents. That is why I'm explaining to you what is uh, represented here. So you have to understand how you do the treatment. That is why when you said uh, decrease in inventory, I asked you, what if there is an increase in inventory? How do you do the treatment? How do you go about it? How do you treat it? So that is very, very important. So if there is an increase in inventory, we add it. If there is a reduction in inventory, it means it has to be subtracted. So it's not about how it is taught is about understanding the concept very very important in relation to that so that is also what you must understand about the material purchases pattern so what have we looked at so far we've looked at the preparation we've looked at the budget committee meeting and the budget committee doing three things that is they determine the strategic objective they uh, look at the basic assumptions they prepare the or they look at the documentation. Number two, they identify the principal budget factor. Number three, they we prepare the sales budget. And once the <coughs> sip some water. Once the sales budget is prepared, we now prepare the functional budget. And we've looked at the production budget. We've looked at the uh what else? The material usage budget and then the material purchases budget in relation to that so if there are any questions you can uh, put it up for me and let me look at it for you real quick I'll be concluding uh, today's broadcast here God willing tomorrow we're gonna be concluding with the rest of the functional budget and certainly I'll be answering some questions as well in relation to that so thank you very much for uh, joining the stream uh today uh god willing tomorrow we're going to be continuing right from here look at the labor budget and look at the various other uh functional budgets that we have to prepare in relation to that so let's see thank you for joining the stream prince anno uh, King B, J Ofosu, uh, Mustafa, um, um, Daniel Oji, then uh, Samuel Kwesin, and then Razak Ayin Fatau. All of you guys, thank you very much for joining the stream. And for you, those of you who are watching the playback as well, thank you very much. If you have any questions, you put them in the comment box. And I'll see you same time tomorrow as we continue with our discussion on how we can prepare the functional budget. And hopefully tomorrow I'll get a better marker so that 
we may be able to see more clearer than we, we were seeing today in relation to that. So all the best. Make sure you take care of yourself. Sanitize your hands regularly. Stay home. And most importantly, eat healthy so your immune system will be strong uh, in order for you to uh, protect yourself and take yourself to the next level. So thank you for joining the stream, and I'll see you same time tomorrow.